All right. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. I'm the co-host here, and Tim Apicella is the other co-host. And don't forget our other co-host. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cynthia, if you're watching, we think of you every day, especially <laughs> Friday. Anyway, so this is Trump week, and uh, my goodness gracious, uh, I'm, I'm getting depressed about it. I'm, I'm getting news fatigue, aren't you? We have so much of this every day, I don't every know. It's night. only been three years, Jane, uh, 911 days of this uh, administration. I don't know why you're even beginning to be fatigued. Well, <laughs> we got a long way to go, it's true. <laughs> but you know, I think the country is fatigued too. A lot of people are sort of turning their backs on it, including people who might, you know, might question him. They're turning their back, can't stay watching it. Even the networks repeat themselves on and on, have the same guests on and on. Um, and, and they, hours every day, may I say, droning on <laughs> about what he's done or not done. And, uh, and in the meantime, he seems to be getting traction. His numbers are up, and he's, his base is arguably bigger. Um, and this is very scary because he's perpetuating a campaign. He's actively campaigning on hate, um, on misogyny. He's act he doubles down on the worst things. When you call him on something, he says, yes, and I really mean it. And that's how his campaign is going. Um, the other thing that he does is he lies. I mean, there's a complete lack of moral fiber here uh, and a lack of ethics. He lies, and he's proud of lying with the alternative truth and all that. He, we talked before, Tim. He's gaslighting us, all of us. We are in a, a quandary as to what is the truth. We have definitional problems. And this isn't just you and me and, you know, the people we know. It's the press, too. Well, and you, you talk about that term gaslighting. Is The ultimate effect is the person who's being lied to starts to question their own um, reality. Yeah. To say, maybe I just don't know what I'm thinking, or, or maybe I just misperceived what he said. But no, what he says is crystal clear. And certainly we saw that at the North Carolina um, rally, if you will. And he's talking about the, you know, the Republican um, candidate, or not candidate, but the representative in Congress, Omar, last name Omar. And uh, he's saying horrible things. And then the crowd chimes in, Send her back. Send her back. So if you and watch he that, thirteen seconds for them to do that, and that's the optimal point because the next day he said, "Oh, I didn't agree with it," and so I tried to speak very quickly. Um, what did he say? Uh, he says, "I think I started speaking very quickly." Well, thirteen seconds in my world is not very quickly, and he stood there at the podium and just kind of took it all in, bathing in it, bathing in it. So yeah. here's a here's a point where he says he spoke very quickly. We, we saw the video. You can time it if you want. It's 13 seconds. So he's gaslighting us. He's gaslighting the nation. And he expects us to swallow it. Yeah, I mean, some people do swallow it. You know, I mean, it's like, it's like an outrage. With so, many, so many things he does, you know, they're outrages. And he doubles down. So, it, you know, you begin questioning, um, how can he do that? And then he continues to do it. And then you know that the, the, base, the base is enjoying that. The base wants that. The base believes him when he says things. They enjoy it. Now, where's a pattern? I mean, this pattern's been going on for uh, 911 days. Actually, before then, because as a candidate, he was doing the same thing. But remember the VFW Hall um, about a year and a half ago? And he's, you know, he's talking about stories about him. And he said, what you are seeing and what you are reading is not what's happening. And he just ex basically denied the factual stories that were being portrayed against him. And he just said... Who are you going to believe, me or your own eyes? Basically, that's what he was saying. We're moving into the reality show. We're moving into the reality show, which is complete fiction, but it's entertaining, okay? And it gets your attention, and it distracts you. It, it, it displaces the truth, <clears throat> and I think that's what's happening, and people are going for that because there is a, a blurred line between fact and fiction in our entertainment, and so I think he's playing on that. He's creating a sort of fictional world for us, and people buy it. I mean, there's got to be all kinds of sociological, psychological explanations for this. But I think people buy it because they like to be in the fiction, and that's what he's selling fiction. Well, if it's fiction, it's pretty close to reality. I mean, it, that's what he's trying to make it, it into. It becomes reality. Um, you know, his, I, I saw this campaign stop or this rally and then this, this overt um, attempt to say to the four representatives of Congress, go back from the, to the country you know, where you belong, basically. Um, that is the opening of his campaign. And remember, June 15th, 2015, 
as he's going down the escalator, what's the first thing he brought up? Uh, if I may read a quick, quick quote on this is, when Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're sending people that have a lot of problems and they're uh, sending problems with us. They belong, they belong to those problems. They're bringing in drugs, they bring in crime, they're rapist, <laughs> comma. And I assume some are good people. So some is the operative word, meaning most of the really Mexicans. He's really fomenting hatred and fear. Well, it's that was really just, all about racism. So he's just renewing that first campaign um, you know, proclamation. He's a, a man who's running on hate. And it's not just the Hispanics. It's not just the Mexicans. It's, it's everyone. You know, uh, make America great again is make America white again. That's what it is. And let's, well, that's uh, what Nancy Pelosi said. Well, I agree with her about that. So anyway, so I mean, you know, we have forgotten about the border this week. Not a whole lot has happened. Uh, I mean, the people are saying that kids are in cages, um, that it's immoral, that it's the most, um, you know, uh, immoral, obnoxious things we can remember in our, in our lives here in the United States. However, there's not a lot of news about it because it's all moved on to other things, to another mm, uh, apprentice show, if you will. Yeah. Uh, this time it's about hatred. And, and, and so we have uh, another episode. It's another episode. And, and the border episode, we'll, we'll, we'll pick that up some other time. Um, well, if you caught what he, what he said when these um, accusations about the horrendous treatment of these children were brought to his attention, and he had to address it. And what he said is, they're leaving an area that, you know, those conditions are far, far worse than what they experience here in, in these detention centers. Um, he almost made it sound like they're lucky to be here and we're taking much better care of them than they were in Mexico or in Guatemala or Honduras. I mean, what kind of rationale? It's hatred. What kind of rationale it's, is that? It's racism. We're, you know, they, they don't have facilities for, to clean up. Uh, they're overcrowded when they sleep. Uh, they have the, you know, the, the minimal provisions. And he's saying they've got it, they've got it made. Yeah, well, that's a lie. You, you remember uh, what uh, Cynthia said last week in, in her informal poll in the state of Alabama. Um, these people deserve what they get because they right, shouldn't have come that. here in the first place. Yeah. Um, it's truly remarkable. And um, I, think, I think that's going to continue. I think um, the, the worst thing that, that I can think of, and you and I spotted it early, was the fact that here in the United States, with all its economy and its technology, the, the Border Patrol did not keep a record of what child what went with what parent. Correct. And they don't know, and there are hundreds if not thousands of children out there that will actually never be reunited with their parents. They separated them physically, they separated them in terms of country, they deported the parents, the children are God knows where, and there's no record of who belongs to who. What a festering <clears throat> blemish this will be on the history of the United States. Yeah. And it will never, it's, it's, ever go away. It's I mean, not lost on you and me, but it's not lost on a lot of people overseas, too. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so we're in the middle of a campaign. Uh, that's what he's doing. He's campaigning, and he's attacking the other side. Um, and he's attacking him on a very <clears> low <throat> attacks. This is going to continue. This is the party of Trump, not the Republican Party. Let me take you down memory lane on the last candidate, Republican candidate, that actually had some morals and, and integrity and ethics. Um, you might remember him. His name was John McCain, and um, he was at. I saw, a, I saw that clip. He was at a rally, and, and if you remember back in two thousand and eight, when he was just he was the candidate, and he was at a rally, and um, one lady stood up and said, well, "No, no, I, I don't trust him. I don't trust him. He's, he's the, an Arab. He's that's he's, what she said. He's an Arab. He's an Arab." And, he, and McCain he said, took, he "No, took, that's not true." He took the microphone exactly. <laughs> he took the microphone. And he goes, "No, ma'am. <clears throat> no, ma'am." He's a decent family man, a citizen that I just happen to have disagreements with on fundamental issues, and that's all what the campaign's all about. I saw okay, that. That was the last great candidate of the GOP that I recall seeing. Well, that was, that's, the, that's the old GOP. The new GOP is different. It's um, uh, Mitch, Mitch McConnell GOP, different. And, and that takes us to the question of Congress. You know, we, we're always trying to connect the dots. So what's happening now is, uh, I call it the Ever Ready Battery, because the little bunny, the Ever Ready Bunny, yeah. is running into the wall, and the wall is the wall between the House and the Senate, and piling up all this legislation um, in the House that, you know, the House feels and Nancy Pelosi feels is worthy, but it, it ends at the wall. 
it doesn't get into the Senate because McConnell's not doing anything. And the result is, um, you know, uh, no action. Uh, Congress is uh, dysfunctional, non-functional, and it's not going to be functional until, um, until the Senate changes. Somehow, I hope, it's just as important as diselecting Trump <clears throat> to diselect those guys. <clears throat> and it's not, because, <clears throat> it's not because they're going to change their minds in the next, uh, you know, the next senatorial terms. It's because they should go. They should, they should be you know, ushered out of government. They have breached their duty to the public. Uh, they should be of no consequence well, to this, us. This will be another four years of gridlock, just, you know, just like the Obama administration, where the House was the gridlock. Uh, with Don Boehner as the Speaker of the House. Yeah. I mean, unless, so unless we... how many decades do we have gridlock where nothing gets done in this country, um, and, and, and we, we flounder as a nation? We do, in every way. <clears throat> this is a, nothing of the cost of having all those guys sit around in the Capitol doing nothing. And, and getting paid for they it. They haven't addressed the issues. <laughs> they haven't resolved anything. Yeah. Uh, hearings are nice, but, um, you know, how about some legislation? How about some... Uh, congressional analysis and legislation. Uh, but, you know, one thing that strikes me, and I, we don't talk about it enough, is that we have a huge deficit, thanks to Trump and the Tax Reform Act of, what was it, 2017, uh, where, he, where he fooled everyone uh, into thinking they were going to get a big, um, you know, reduction in their taxes. Well, the corporations got it, and permanently, but the middle class did, got it temporarily, and it wasn't much. And the result is we have a much bigger deficit than we had before. And uh, you think that Republicans are going to be, um, you know, traditionally they have been uh, restrained about the budget. Um, not this time. They are throwing it away, yeah. and including on the military, I might add. And so what's, what's going on is we have this, you know, multi-trillion dollar deficit. <clears throat> uh, we don't have the tax revenues to pay it or pay it down. We're in worse fiscal condition Way, but way worse than we were when, when he started, okay? And here we are up against in September. It's like, what, a month, six weeks away? We're, we're up against the, the debt ceiling again. Congress is going to get into another crisis over that. Correct. It's coming soon, and there'll be a shutdown. God knows what will happen. Why is this a surprise to anyone of the GOP? Remember, Donald Trump loves debt. He, he proclaims debt as, you know, a great thing to have. Debt on the to, basis of fraudulent representations, well, that kind of debt. you wouldn't admit to that, but he loves debt. So why would a trillion-dollar deficit really get under his skin at all? It's not. It's not at all. And, and to his, you know, to, to bolster his belief that debt is good, the stock market is at 27000 And the Dow is doing completely what's opposite of what should have happened with a trillion-dollar deficit. And it's not happening. Well, they say the, the economy and the stock market are both a function of public confidence. And somehow, you know, here's a, you know, uh, an excellent confidence man who makes us believe things that aren't necessarily true. And that perpetuates, you know, the economy as such as it is. There are real flaws in it, frankly. Uh, and it perpetuates the stock market such as it is. But when we find out that it's all a matter, it's a confidence game, when we find out that the, you know, the, the, the statements he's making, the assurances he's providing, uh, and which people believe aren't true, then I suggest that it's not going to be a, a slow decline. It's going to be, be a, a sharp, rapid, yeah, sharp, sharp decline. decline. It's going to be the biggest decline the country has ever seen because it's, it's built on smoke. Um, and we're going to find out the reality collectively. The markets will find out the reality, and boom. And I don't know when that's going to be, but I think that's what's coming. It's been going up for 10 years. Yeah, I mean, all things, all parties come to an end sooner or later. And just by natural time of a decade of, pro, you know, not prosperity, but you've, we've climbed out of the worst recession in the history of this country. And we climbed out of it in 2008. And here it is, 2019. And it's time for what I call market corrections. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, but you're right. The, the, the confidence is still extremely high. And I guess that's good from one standpoint. But... When you have um, obvious things that are, you know, that a, a trillion dollars of debt, when you have other things that are very, you have an inverted yield curve on our interest rates. These are obvious things, but I go back to Donald Trump's, you know, his quote, uh, are you, what you are seeing and what you are reading is not what's happening. Well, these things are happening. And so somehow he's got a, a hold over, you know, investors on this. 
Let's, talk, let's talk about um, Iran. Because Iran's been in the news lately over uh, drone number two. Drone number two. Episode number two having to deal with drones. Right. Uh, so now we shot down, uh, shot down, I know that's not exactly accurate, even if it were, even if it did happen. We're not sure it did happen. Right. Uh, a, a, an Iranian drone that was approaching a U.S. warship. Um, and uh, you told me this morning, well, no, it's uh, actually we didn't shoot it down. We, we intercepted its uh, radio signal, and, and that brought it down. Correct. Um, but do we have it? Do we have pieces of it? Yeah, do we, we have any know. proof of it? Uh, because the Iranians deny it. They say all their drones are accounted for. Uh, so I, I don't know what to who believe. Know, yeah, who knows what to believe? Yeah, you, that's that's a really a big point. We don't know yeah. what to believe anymore. But you can believe that the Iranians confiscated a British uh, a mini tanker, oil tanker, a very small one. Um, that's been confiscated, and now they're going to uh, float it through the Straits of Hormuz. And that's a fact. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I believe them when they say that they're going back to making bombs. I believe they're doing that. And I think, uh, as one uh, NPR com commentator said this morning, uh, every month, you know, there's an incident that brings us closer to war. And if you listen to the rhetoric, uh, you, get, you get stronger rhetoric um, every time something like this happens. And people are threatening war uh, on both sides. Let me um, ask you this. Is it far better for a president to be a wartime president when it comes to re-election? Oh, yeah. Yeah, not Gee, only that. Gee, what a coincidence. Yeah, well, exactly. It works in his favor. It does not work in the benefit of the country or the benefit of any other country, frankly. Um, but it works in the favor of the, uh, the guy who's running for office and who is the president. So I mean, and I and I uh, and I've wondered if if the war gets really heated as we go forward to the election day in 2020, um, he could claim a national emergency. He could uh, delay the elections. Um, he could he could call um, he could call the elections uh, rigged and all that. They're very troublesome. And P.S. You know, there's this thing about uh, I forget the name of the product. There's something about face face photo. Um, and it's an app on your phone, and uh, people have been using it. It, it changes the way you look, uh, but more importantly, it keeps a copy of your face, and it's getting pictures of everybody's face uh, voluntarily because it's yeah. fun to, to make Tim look older or younger or whatever it does. Come to find that the headquarters for this app, this face app, okay, is in Russia. It's, in, it's a Russian company. Not the only one. There are others yeah. too, like that, that that are, that are on the market, you know, as um, legitimate uh, apps and applications uh, for your computer or whatnot, and they they emanate from and are operated in Russia. Right. And in Russia, you have to assume there's a connection with with the bad guys. So uh, if you're worried about uh, facial recognition, if you're worried about a loss of privacy, you can include that in your right. concern. Well, I could just see Donald Trump using it to mock his fellow uh, opposing candidates. Making their face look all sorts of goofy poses and, and looks. And have fun with that, just trying to mock them. Rather yeah. than call them Pocahontas, I'll make them look like Pocahontas. Facial recognition is yeah. a problem. There's more cameras going up, except in San Francisco. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, I mean, I feel that, that, that we have, we have a, you know, a serious problem in China over the loss of privacy. And I think it's, it's going to happen here, too. Um, and the Attorney General, your Attorney General, not mine. Um, What's his name? Barr. Yes. Um, <laughs> is really he's out of the bag now. Uh, you know, this week uh, the uh, that case uh, where the fellow was choked by a New York City policeman, the Department of Justice, uh, just as the, um, the statute of limitations was expiring, Department of Justice said, "No, nah, we're not going to prosecute that." The Southern District of New York, which is controlled in such decisions by the Department of Justice, uh, Barr in Washington. Yeah. And there have been so many other decisions that Barr has made, uh, you know, for and in the name of the Department of Justice, that, you know, the Department of Justice is going south on us. It's being controlled by a guy who's being controlled by Trump. So our legal system, you know, we have Trump who is not into rule of law or the, or the Constitution in any way. Um, we have Barr who does what Trump says, and he's not, you know, he's just going to do what Trump says. That's really horrible. Uh, and we have the courts, which are being stocked, even as we speak. While we look at the headlines and all this about Iran and about hatred and about the border, um, he's stocking the courts with right-wing conservative judges. So our legal system is being deteriorated as we speak, Tim. 
it's been eroded. Um, uh, however, many decisions have been against Trump and his efforts to subvert the law and the Constitution. So I still see checks and balances. Um, they take a long time to get to court, unfortunately. That's what um, uh, was recently mentioned about the Mueller um, testimony that's going to take place here on the 24th of July, but also other subpoenas. I mean, it just takes time to grind through the system. And it's designed to be that way, I suppose. Well, but it's having, it's having a very negative effect. Everything is so slow. And so you look back on Mueller and you look at what Barr said, you know, uh, Trump said, uh, you know, no, no, uh, no collusion, uh, no, what was the other one? No. Well, no, no, no collusion, no, no obstruction. No obstruction. And there's three questions that should be asked at the Mueller testimony. Did you, did your report say there was collusion? Now, it wasn't conspiracy, but was there collusion? Did your report say that there was obstruction? And last but not least, did you exonerate the President of the United States? Those are the only three questions I would want to ask, because I know what the answer is going to be, and it needs to be heard to the American public rather than a 448-page report. Well, he's going to try to stick to, stick to his script, you know. He's, well, that's he's, fine. He's not, he's not going to be candid very easily. And I, I, I don't have high <clears throat> hopes. I'm sorry. We'll see what happens. Everybody be listening. And I hope the, uh, hope the House uh, drafts good questions and presses for answers. You know, sometimes uh, these guys just grandstand. Uh, you think they know how to be uh, good cross-examiners, sometimes they don't. According to Jerry Nadler, they've been huddled together to work on the questions in unison. We'll not, see. not every uh, representative or, um, is, is constructing their own separate questions. It looks like they're actually figuring it out as a group. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd be Because you don't have that much time. Well, speaking this. of time, I don't, I don't think that, um, that Trump is going to just stand by and, and, and watch the, the television on uh, Mueller. He's going to... Think of another distraction. Well, he has to because to minimize Mueller. Because this was what happened to Richard Nixon. It was the actual public testimony that actually, really, member of the public started to get the full picture of what was really going on. They weren't getting it from the newspapers, and they weren't getting it from TV reports. They really, they watched, they watched those those public hearings, and then they go, ah. And as soon as those public hearings are going on, the the the, the public polls for impeachment went way up, but before it wasn't. Yeah, well, the number of people in the House who want impeachment is increasing for sure. 95. 95. It's every time you look, it's more. And I guess it affects somebody, not the base maybe, but it affects somebody in the House. The problem is they can't do anything, and uh, that's why this well, election is so important. <clears throat> they can't do anything yet because um, Representative Al Green's uh, impeachment um, proposal was based simply on the racist statements that Donald Trump made, okay? That's a very finite, finite uh, band of w w bandwidth of, of reasons for impeachment. But what if you say uh, payments to Stormy Daniels and the illegal campaign financing of that? What do you say about obstruction of justice? What do you say about the racist comments? What do you say about all these things you can add on to the list of reasons of high crimes and misdemeanor? Well, maybe then you'll get more than 95 votes. Yeah, but you know what? It's like, you know the word Dieno? It, it would have been enough. Dieno means it would have been enough. And, um, you know, any one of those things would have been, should have been enough to initiate uh, an, imp an impeachment. And the problem is that, that politically, that impeachment is a political process. And uh, none of them were. And even collectively, they aren't because it's a political process. How many... How many representatives, GOP representatives in the House, in the House, voted with the resolution that this racism that Trump um, conducted Not against many. the four representatives, yeah. how many went over to and said, this is intolerable? Yeah. I think it was three or four, yeah. max. Yeah. Well, they're voting on party lines, most of them. And they're going to continue to do that for every bill. You know? Well, then, Congress is... then uh, things we've talked about many times is let, let the House stand up for what it believes about the rule of law and the, and the preservation of the Constitution. They're not going to win on the impeachment, but let that be a statement to yeah. the American public that we stand for something. We didn't win, but we stand for something. Yeah, right. we're, we're not completely immobilized. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, you know, I, I, I uh, want to look at my notes. Yeah, the press, the press. So we spoke before about, about the television media repeating themselves, having the same guests on. It's uh, sort of poking, poking at Trump every day. 
uh, for hours, repeating themselves from one hour to another hour to another hour. And although I have trouble watching Fox News, I'm, I'm sure they're doing the same thing. And so, you know, what you have is the press is, excuse the expression, droning on about this. And people are getting fatigued about it. But what's interesting is they're always looking for something new. Just to their credit, they're supposed to be looking for something new. And, um, and some of the news articles uh, really don't talk about the primary offense, like, you know, the send them home, sort of thing, send them back. That's the primary offense. They rather look for angles on that. Right. The Times had an article about this. They, they, what, what do the Republicans think about this? Send them back. So, I mean, what we have is um, we're buried in this news about Trump and the administration. We're buried in this news about how the government isn't working. And we're really, really tired of it. I don't know how the press could you know, do better. I think sometimes uh, more analysis would be helpful. Connecting the dots would be helpful. Um, the country is changing, you know, and it's not just in government. It's changing because of what's happening in government, uh, because of the rule changes that he's making, because of the social, the social evolution, the social dynamic that is being created. The country is changing. And the, I think we will see that in the near term. We will yeah. see those things happen. I agree the country is changing, but also the more things change, the more they say the same. <laughs> okay. Because okay. what I believe is this Epstein uh, episode in the press. Um, boy, did that get attention because it was something different than the usual um, droning on, if you will. I mean, this was salacious. This was really something that the, the press could get their teeth on. Um, this is no different than when John Edwards was running as for president and his you know, well-kept mistress and child was, was discovered. Uh, There's no different than you know, previous politicians and their sex scandals. Oh, Gary Hart. Gary well, Hart, that's the one I was, was trying to remember. Thank immediately. you. Immediately, <laughs> he was out of business immediately. That was it. That was the end of it. But um, you know, Trump has been through a lot of these things, and he's not out of business. In fact, some people like it. They think it's a sign of, of, uh, of a sign of will and power and well, strength. Well, he can change the story all he wants, but these things keep coming up. They keep bubbling up. And a uh, judge just unsealed the documents for the uh, Michael Cohen um, payments to Stormy Daniels. Well, those documents have been unsealed. And again, it shows very, very distinctly that Donald Trump now was the master of these, directing these payments. Yeah. And this happened the day after the Access Hollywood video. And what else happened the day after the Hollywood video? Um, the Podesta break-in of, of his emails. That happened the day after. So Donald Trump is kind of the Marriott master, puppet master on this stuff. Yeah, but, but remember that uh, William Barr, um, decided not to uh, pursue the prosecution um, of, of those um, of, of, of that payment. And While so, and, he's in office. No, no, the statute of limitations. The uh, statute of limitations been, on that, I think, is 2022. It's, it's about to run. I, I, I thought think it was 2020. Well, well, it depends what yeah. crime you're talking about. Right. I, I don't know. For There's sure. so many. I, it's, it's true. I mean, we live in a, world, we a about? world of crime that fascinates yeah. us, but it doesn't help the country. It doesn't really help the economy. It doesn't have our relations with, uh, you know, all these other countries. Um, and we, we sink deeper into this, this sort of world of slimy episodes of a, of a, of a reality well, and show. And the, the saying that everything he touches dies. I mean, Hope Hicks out of this, this um, unsealed documents, she's going to be called back into Congress to see, well, see what happens. she was lying before the House. Happens. Wait for a distraction on that one, too. Yeah. So, okay, here we are. We've, we've looked at it today, maybe looking back. What, what, what do you see looking forward on this? I mean, in terms of the events next week that we can expect. I think you can expect more outrageous statements from Donald Trump as pertaining to his candidacy and the fact that um, people are behind him, no matter how outrageous he is. Um, people are supporting him, and he'll, he'll drone on about that. And he'll make more outrageous statements about the squad. And, He's getting traction on this. He sees it in his poll numbers. So this is a good for him. He likes this. You know, in two weeks' time, there's, a, there's another uh, Democratic um, debate. Right. It's going to be really interesting to see how that works. And I hope they, can, they, meaning the people involved, can get their act together so they don't look like they're shooting each other. Uh, and they can provide some leadership for us. I think they learned a lesson. Um, we'll see. But we'll see if Kamala Harris has learned not to do that because, you know, she's got a long way to go. <laughs> In this yeah, race, in some ways, and it if she, her, if she ways, pushes herself way out in the corner, um, it's not going to help her. Yeah, we need a leader yeah. now. 
Okay. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Jay. Next week. Next week, Trump week. Come. Trump week. Every week, Trump week. Okay, we'll do it.